hope I'm, I'm being seen and heard. Uh, my name is uh, Marinos Diamantidis. I'm a professor of uh, uh, constitutional law and political theory here at the Bergbeck uh, School of Law. I want to thank you, first of all, for joining us in this uh, webinar, as they call them, a chat room where I'm going to tell you a little bit about the school in general, mostly about the program I direct to which you hopefully will be applying. Um, and then there'll be time for you to ask me uh, questions. I also have a, a colleague here who can help me um, if you need further information. So um, first of all, I want to tell you that Birkbeck is um, a constituent college of the University of London, which uh, I think speaks for itself. University of London is a prestigious university. Birkbeck College was founded back in the early 19th century by a gentleman called Sir George Birkbeck, but also his friend Jeremy Bentham and others, with the idea of um, establishing a high quality institution of tertiary education, which concentrates on evening teaching. So this is what we're best at. Um, you will be getting a University of London degree, having attended um, two to three times a week between six and nine in the evening. We're located right in the middle of London in Bloomsbury, just behind the British Museum. And um, apart from these face-to-face um, -face encounters, we have quite a lot of uh, technology available now that will allow you to um, study also online with resources that we put online and so on. I also want to uh, tell you that I'm very proud to work here because it's a place uh, the, the School of Law in particular, that's been recognized by the government as being in the top 10 uh, in terms of output and quality of research. So we're very um, research intensive um, colleagues here and, and our teaching is informed by our research. And also that we are very distinct, distinctive in that um, and we're known for doing um, legal studies in an interdis interdisciplinary way and in spe specifically we call it critical legal studies. I think, I hope that what I'll say later about the content of the program, I hope you'll join, will give you a taste of what that means. Um, before I do that though, I have to just remind you that you'll need a minimum of a 2-2 um, um, bachelor uh, degree, but if you have, if you believe you have professional qualifications, that um, are very relevant to this course, and I'll give you a hint about what kind of students come here in a minute. Um, we could also look at that um, as opposed to um, the uh, formal qualification. Also, if, you're, if English is not your first language, you'll have to have um, an IELTS. TS. Um, you can find this online, what the, the exact criteria for admission are. And also I want to tell you that there are two ways of studying this program, which I forgot to mention. It's a master's or LLM in constitutional politics, um, law and theory. Uh, you can do it um, in that conventional way, which would mean starting next October. And you can do it in one, over one year or two years in full time or part time. Or you can choose to do it in what we call intensive format. That would mean, again, full-time or part-time, one year or two years, but that's a very different way of studying. That means that you would start in, um, um, the, in the winter of 2021, and you would have face-to-face um, -face teaching for a few weeks in um, spring, what we call the spring term, March, April, and then again in the middle of summer, and the rest would be done online. So that's the intensive. You will find online the two avenues. One is the normal LLM CLPT. The other one is the intensive version. Um, I also want to tell you that the program usually is not that big in terms of numbers, but it has been very successful in attracting um, a specific kind of student, uh, both from the UK and much a lot of uh, international students come too. Um, the People who come here are not necessarily, or not even half would be with a legal background. As the title of the program suggests, this is about the intersection of politics and law and the theory that comes with it. So a lot of our students come from politics background, 
uh, or law, but others will also come from history or other disciplines, and that is not a barrier. I mean, the program is designed to cater for people who, for either academic or professional reasons, need to know what the two core modules of this program gives, and what would that be? So the two, what we call core compulsory subjects, um, which are set out, you know, sequentially, are uh, what we call the first one is introduction to the history, theory, and politics of constitutional law, and that, as the name suggests, is um, about um, the trajectory that we have followed since about the late Middle Ages all the way to now in how we expect or not law to help us structure our political our politics. The second part is much less theoretical. It's called Constitutional Law in Practice Regional Perspectives. And that is, um, some people find that even more exciting than the first. I like the first a lot. But the second one is basically each week you are studying a constitutional uh, case or crisis in a different region or country by a person who is a specialist or has first-hand experience with that region or country. I mean, to give you an example, this year, um, when the, this model will begin in, in January, there will be people who specialize in British constitutional law talking about Brexit. There will be uh, you know, former Greek MPs who talk about the uh, sovereign debt crisis in Greece a few years back and what that meant for the constitution. There will be specialists in Russia talking about Russia and so on and so forth. Israel and religions, Latin America, lots of different areas. Um, okay, so um, uh, let me tell you a little bit about why I think the whole program is worth um, pursuing. First of all, you will not find anywhere a specialized program at this level, which brings together insights from legal constitutional theory and political constitutional theories. These two, uh, you may know already, but these two forms of constitutionalism are a bit antagonistic over the, the few last few centuries. So whether you put democracy first or the rule of law first, uh, leads you either to prioritize the rule of law or vice versa, um, institutions that channel uh, political energies towards the common good. Now, right now at this time in, 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 in history, um, this area is becoming again extremely topical. There's been, constitution that has been around for quite a few, uh, you know, for, for, for a few centuries now, two centuries, but there was a time around the time when, you know, the Soviet Union collapsed and so on that we thought, you know, legal constitutions will prevail and everything will be in order together with capitalism or other neoliberalism. That is no longer the assumption. I mean, you just need to look around and you will see, I don't need to be, uh, you know, trivial here, but, you know, protests everywhere, constitutional crisis, rise of populism, um, as well as um, increased security, uh, securitization of public life due to threats such as terrorism and so on. And of course, the huge influence that financial markets may have on politics. Um, all of this means that for many people, we need to either reinvent democracy and political constitutionalism and find new ways of um, having social conflicts basically resolve themselves beyond, let's say, parliament uh, uh, and perhaps beyond the nation state borders because the kind of problems, global problems that underpin these social conflicts are now global. For instance, ecological challenges, migration and so on. Others put their hopes on law. For instance, here many will say to you, look, much of this crisis around Brexit and what was to happen after the referendum was decided should could have been resolved had we had a, le a legal codified constitution in the UK, which as you probably know, is one of the two countries that doesn't have a legal constitution in a codified way, but a conventional one only. So this is the point then where people are mostly interested in finding out which of the two kind of constitutionalists is to turn to, to resolve the crisis. And yet, 
So it's very good that you would join us to learn about the history behind these two strands and their potential. But it is also the time to understand that from my perspective, I mean, from the perspective of academics, neither legal nor political constitutionalists may have you in their traditional format, may give you